It's going to be a great day. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Matt Beck podcast. Today, I've got a special guest. So we're going we're gonna to talk to him, talk about that, talk about everything. Let me get this up. This podcast is brought to you by my friends at MinervaBeauty.com. Check out our salon. This is a uh, little video I shot this morning. Uh, we got some new color trays, so check those out. They're all in gold. They have them in black, silver, uh, but they're super cool. And uh, they just create the most beautiful salon furniture ever. So if you're looking for new salon furniture, check out MinervaBeauty.com backslash uh, FSE and you'll get a discount. Uh, so check them out. And uh, that's pretty much that. So uh, super excited. Again, I got a special guest today. Um, Johnny Livingston is in the house. Uh, let me see if I can pull you on here, pal. Um, there he is. So what's up? What's up, buddy? How's How you been? Good, Great, man. man. So we had we had a little bit of technical difficulties this morning, but we made it made it happen, right? <laughs> yeah, we had had some uh, technical issues. We mainly, won't we won't mainly. explain <laughs> what happened. We'll just say that we couldn't figure it out, and it took about a half an hour. But we're all good, right? <laughs> So, yeah, we're good to go. I, so I've known Johnny for uh, probably about what two, three years now. Two years, at yeah, least. Yeah, about three. I yeah. think we're going on three. So, um, super talented guy. So, uh, you know, what I'll say to the people out there that don't maybe don't know who you are is that um, you put so much effort into um, just becoming successful in the industry. I mean. When you, when you look at a lot of people and some of the questions that we'll probably even have today, um, a lot of people ask, like, what do you do to be successful um, in this industry? And it's really just a lot of hard work, right? Yeah, so, a lot yeah. of hard work. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you, check it you know, out. It's one of them things where you got to, you know, you got to make a goal and, like, really do everything you can to strive to get it. Yeah, for That's sure. That's the easiest way to put it. And, uh, and I see those awards behind your head. So, uh, yeah, there you go. The Cosmoprof Award. So let's get a little... <laughs> yeah. Got my... <laughs> oh, oh, they even go over there. Nice. Uh, yeah, so... well, I got my all my magazines that I've been in and stuff Very like cool, that man. too. So. so tell me, um, so just for the people out there, uh, especially like beginning stylists and stuff, um, as you've been working through this, what's been like the biggest thing that's helped you out um, just to, you know, put yourself in the position to get those awards and all that? Um, not being closed minded and reaching out to people like you and others in the industry that are willing to help you, because if you really want help, there's people that will help you. You know, there's, it, but you got it. You have to want it because we all start to recognize who's really real and who's kind of just like sitting in the in the corner. Um, so, I mean, you know, this industry is pretty beautiful, and the people are there. They're willing to help you if you if you really want it. Yeah. And what do you mean by like uh, people kind of sitting in the corner? What do you What do you say about that? Um, the people that you know they uh, they might say that they want to do this, but they're not really willing to put the work or the effort in or the ones that just kind of are like, no, I just want to be in the industry and just be in my own little cozy corner. And I don't want to worry about awards and I don't want to worry about putting my work out there. I just want to do me and do this, you know? Okay. So, um, I think <clears throat> for me, like, uh, I've never really been somebody that kind of apply or went out to get the awards and stuff. Um, I like, I like being, uh, you know, somebody that is trying to be influential in the industry, but, um, like the competition part of it, I've never really been involved in. Um, so for me, I'm interested just, um, what is like your favorite part about that? Like, what do you like about being in those contests? What has it done for you, um, behind the chair? Like, uh, is it bringing you more revenue that way or what do you get out of it? Um, Honestly, I just originally did it just to put myself out there, just to, uh, you know, not be afraid to show my work off. 
not so much that I was really trying to, to win. I think I was just out there trying to put my work out there. And then when I got nominated, then it all changed, you know, yeah. obviously it changed, you know, then I, I was like, Oh, I got a shot now. Yeah. Um, but I think now, even like last year with the multiple nominations that I had from behind the chair and with Cosmoprof, I think that I, I, I think I was more content on just wanting to just keep putting my work out there for businesses and just to, you know, see what, see where it takes me. Yeah. Uh, I, I like even this year, I'm going to submit a lot of work, but I don't, I don't know if I really want it. I mean, I would love to win. I just don't know if that's like my, my goal anymore. I think it's just, I think my validation is good now, which I don't know why I always doubted myself before. Um, But that was a lot of growth in the last two years too, you know? For sure. I think that that's like, so the one thing I, one of my favorite moments is you, I wish I had a video clip of it, but when you won your (laughs) first award, you could definitely tell that you did not think it was going to happen. But you know, <laughs> it, it did, and it was just cool. I, did you? You did a backflip or something, right? <laughs> Didn't you? Like I, a break dance. I did break. a break dance on the stage. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Then so, last year I did the, I did the, uh, oh, I can't remember what they call the dance now. I don't know. I did one of the new dances that the kids do on Fortnite. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, so, all right. So I want to get into some questions because let's. Uh, you know, see what we can bring to the people. Uh, this is actually Joel has been following uh, Free Salon Education for, for quite a while now, always posting questions. I actually have two questions from him. Uh, he says, your podcasts okay. are always awesome, energetic, blah, blah, blah. blah. There we go. Uh, my question is, when, uh, when were you like, okay, I know my stuff. Um, I have the all, the overall confidence that now I can be more independent and teach other people one, three years, five years, um, please elaborate. So basically, I guess what he's saying is, when did you feel the confidence um, to teach people um, behind the chair? Like, when did you feel like you could do that? Um, you do some education now. I've seen I've seen your face on some flyers, <laughs> right? So yeah. Um, yeah. how was that for you? I'll, I'll answer on my end as well, but how was that for you? Uh, when did you feel like that's something, you had something to give? I think last year after the award show in um, in uh, Maryland at BTC, I like had this thing like I, I wasn't really there to win. I was there to network, and even in Orlando at Cosmoprof Beauty, I was I really my my goal was to go down there and network, and I pretty much did that. I, that's all I did. Like I went to. You know, I really, I partied a little bit, but I went to every after party to really network with all the people, like big name people in the industry or people that everybody knows in the industry. Um, And that was my goal. So after leaving Orlando, I had a lot of confidence going into just about everything because I, um, I don't know, I just, I had a whole different mindset and you know going into last year this this year i'm sorry i just said you know somebody uh, my friend amy reached out to me and she wanted me to become part of this little movement that we got going and we started it at the end of last year and we got some dates going into this year and right. you and know so- i just I, I don't know it's 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 kind of clicked i like i always knew that i could teach yeah because I'm, I'm a coach. I'm also a father of two, two awesome boys, but I coach also. So teaching kind of comes easy. It's kind of hand in hand. Yeah. So I think, it goes I think into, I've always been there. That's a good co- uh, right? conversation as well. Cause when you, when you look at, um, you know, the similarities between like coaching or, you know, just having children or like all that stuff, like I feel like they go, hand in hand in a way. And, um, you know, as my son's getting older now, he's 11, but like just, you know, going into like revisiting athletics because I I played football, um, in high school. Um, I played hockey when I was younger and just like, you know, having good coaches in your life or people that, you know, inspire you or whatever. And then as 
that transfers into to teaching and education and all of that. And one of the th- things that I find really funny and, and kind of on my side of, of this answer is I, I always felt like I wanted to share something. So like, even when I was six months into beauty school, I had the opportunity, like, like you, um, I put myself out there right from the get go. Um, three months into school, I, I joined a competition. It was the only competition I've ever done. Um, and it was at the Chicago hair show. I, I lived near Iowa. And, uh, so I went to the Chicago hair show. It was one of the first times I was ever in Chicago. And, um, I joined this student competition and I did the most ridiculous hairstyle ever. But at that time I was so pumped on it. And then I got to experience my first hair show. And when I was in there, I saw Robert Cromings for the first time. And I, I literally did not leave the stage the whole day. And I just watched it. And, and that's where I decided, you know, this is what I wanted to do. Like I love doing hair, but I loved the, the connection that he was building with people. Um, so I figured out as soon as I got home, how, how could I do that? Like, how can I get that job? And, you know, from that minute I was just driven to do it. And so six months into school, I went out to my first hair show, uh, to assist, uh, volunteer my time. And the guy that was doing the show actually invited me, Sam Burns, he invited me on stage to cut hair. And did I have anything to share? I don't know. It was probably awful. Like whatever I was doing up there was probably so bad, but at the same time I was so passionate about it. And I think sometimes passion, this is what drives me nuts about this industry and kind of where I want to go with this conversation is there's people that educate to, to actually share something. And for me, education is sharing. So if I share something with you, I'm giving it to you for then you to do whatever you want with it, right? There's a thing in education now that, and it's been like this for a while, but there's also ego educators that teach to be seen and not to actually share. Because what happens is when you actually use what they teach you, um, then you start, uh, the negative things start coming. So, um, you know, and there's hashtags going around about like, craft hairdressing and and I'm not wrapping you into any of this stuff, but this is my own thoughts, but like, you know, craft hairdresser and, uh, don't make untalented hair cutters famous, like all this stuff. And, and for me, it's just kind of a young mindset. Um, and being in the industry for a long time, like maybe I would have had those same kind of thoughts back, back in the day. Um, but when you're an educator, when you're truly an educator, you don't care. Like if somebody, Sam Via said it best to me, he was in my studio, he's cutting hair and you know, we're having this conversation. He's like, Matt, anything that you ever see from me, please use it and share it and keep it going. And that's like, right. that's to me, what's crazy. Um, you know, so to kind of, that's a way off the topic on that answer. But when you sum it all together, like if you have, if you have passion, then you have something to share whether it's right or wrong, it's your thoughts at that moment, you should share it. And then moving forward, you'll just get better. The things I was teaching 12 years ago, I might think are ridiculous now, but 12 years ago, I thought they were, you know, they made so much sense to me and I've grown as a, uh, an educator since then. Right. Right. As both an educator and an artist. Right. And, uh, let's see. I think you're an artist. I think I'm an educator. <laughs> I think I'm an educator. So I actually, let me pull up. This is like, so people can actually see. I'm going to pull up your Instagram real quick. Right there. All right. I want to show, I don't have any slides here, but like some of the work. Let me see if I can. It'll focus in. Oh yeah, that focus nice. So like some of the work, my photography is getting better. (laughs) Yeah, dude, your photography. Yeah. So when we met, when we met, you didn't even have a ring light yet, but yeah, look at this Uh -uh. stuff now, man. So it's just, you know, it's just really cool. Uh, and if you go to jcash uh, underscore the hair techs, Instagram, you'll see, um, more of his work, but I think you're an artist. Like for me, I'm a teacher of practical things. 
Um, yes. And, and I'm, I'm a very good one at that. Well, thanks. Thanks. But I, in that for me, I like to figure out the easiest way to explain things. You know, I, I get a kick out of trying to simplify haircutting or whatever it is because our jobs aren't that complicated. Um, and once you figure out the fundamentals, then you can be artistic, I feel like. So, um, but you're right. definitely, I would say on that artistic end and the fact that you're taking education and you're, um, starting to make that part of what you do, I think is awesome because if somebody right, yeah. really artistic can also teach, I just think it's like a win-win. Um, all right. So yeah. next question here, this is actually cool. There's tons of questions within this, but, um, what is your view on the direction of the hair industry um, currently? Let's say, should hairdressers and barbers be qualified slash licensed? Should the industry be regulated by the government? So this is a big question, but what are your thoughts on that? Um, I do believe that everybody should be licensed. Um, but I also believe and this is has more to do with, well, I shouldn't say more to do with barber schools because there are cosmetology schools that are kind of in the same boat. Yeah. Um, they they just they're not teaching what I believe needs to be taught. You know, they're just shown the basics enough to pass the test, this, that, and the other, and they really need to like be taught. Like there needs to be some regulation amongst what's being taught. I think. And I think that's what will like really improve everything. And I know that a couple of, you know, bigger name barbers like Tyreek Jackson and, you know, he's very much an advocator towards to that. And he's like one of them guys that at his schools, you're going to learn how to cut hair. Nice. You're really going to learn how to cut hair. You're really going to learn how to use shears. You're really going to learn how to, you know, take sanitation to the max, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, yeah. but it just, it just seems like a lot of schools nowadays, they're just, you know, they're in it to make money and they just want you to do enough to pass your state boards and that's it. And what, what is like, uh, where's his school at? Uh, his, it's in Philadelphia somewhere. Oh, it is. Yeah. That's cool. I, I believe. Um, so oh, you should have him on your, definitely. You should have him on. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That'd be cool. As one smart guy. Okay. Um, so I I totally agree with you. I think there should be I I just think there should be regulation in how how things are taught because there's definitely like you're yeah. saying, there's no like there's no people get out of school, they have no idea what they're doing. You know, not everybody, but like a lot of uh, stylists and but then there's stylists that are doing hair for 15 years. They don't know what they're doing either because there's no regulation mm -hmm. in, you know, bettering yourself. But that's okay. Like for me, I'm like, okay, that's fine. If you want to be 15 years into the industry and not get any better than you did the day you walked out of beauty school, that's a benefit to me, right? As a, a hairdresser. Right. Does it make the industry um, not at like, not as uh what's the word i'm looking for like is it hurting the industry i think every industry has people that aren't talented at what they do and then people that are like if you look at business owners yeah. you have business owners that are super talented at what they do and you have terrible business owners and they they their business closes within you know a year six months whatever like right. hairdressers it's the same thing i think we just take it too personal that because i, it's I think it goes yeah I think it goes the same like with, with clients also. Yeah. You have a client that just wants a haircut. Yeah. And then you have a client that wants a haircut. Right. Yeah. You know, there's, yeah. a, there's a big difference. There's a lot of guys that they just, they don't care what it really looks like. They don't care whatever. And it's up to, like, that's one thing I think it's up to me to teach them. You know, you need to care about yourself. You need to care about the way you look. You need to care about how your hair is cut. Yeah. And then it goes you know? into, well, why don't they care? You know? They right. probably don't care because no one's ever taught them, um, you know, things that make them like, uh, like I never put lotion. <laughs> this is ridiculous, but I never put lotion on my face ever in my life. I was like dove soap all the way. No lotion. Don't care. And then Christina, my wife is like, 
you know, you're getting older and maybe you should try it. And, and then I'm like trying and now I'm like, I can't not. And now I'm like, right. I need to, like I'm shopping for lo like face lotion and like face scrubs and like all this stuff that I never in a million years would have thought that that would be something I would want to do. But like, I was never taught. It wasn't something that was brought right. to my attention. And now I'm like, Oh, this is so much better. Like you got to think about like, these guys sit in your chair. They have no idea. Most of them have no idea beyond the haircut that they've always gotten forever. And it's our job to really just expand that. And then that creates excitement. And then all of a sudden you have a client that can't wait to come back. It's like, th this is the thing that blows my mind. Every time um, we get into like these discussions and it's like, how do I build my book faster? Um, what do I do about cancellations? What about my commission percentage? It's like all of these, the same questions every time. But the answer is take care of your guest behind the chair. Only care about them. First and foremost. Yeah. Only care about them. And they will, they can't, then they can't wait to see you. They can't wait to rebook. They don't want to cancel. Like all of this stuff stems from you taking care of your client. If you don't take care of your client, right. they don't care to come back. Like they'll come back whenever it's, you know, gets extreme and they need a haircut. You want them, you want to build that relationship. You want them to come into you, into your chair. Right. Yep. Yep. All right. Let's see. And what That's other part of that's. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was yeah. just going to say that's part of what's, you know, having your client talking to your client and making sure that they understand why it's important to come in every two to three weeks to get a haircut rather than once every six months. You know, right. And it's but it's funny. up to you as the stylist behind the chair is to talk to them about that. Yeah. This guy actually gets right into it. He says, are stylists caring more mm. about their social media platform than their actual client? Uh, are we losing the connection between stylist and client because of social media? Uh, these are topics that I worry for our industry uh, and would love to hear your thoughts. So he's saying the same thing. Like this is the discussion, you know, that, that we're having, but I think it's a discussion that we're having in life in general is, is social media more important than like the actual connection. And I think getting people involved and actually, I don't know if you saw, um, and I'll talk about this, but Brian in our salon, he started this, uh, why are you in my chair hashtag thing, which he's mm -hmm. basically taking pictures with his clients now, uh, and then writing a story about why they're in his chair. And you know, that's, Brian's probably one of the best people I've ever met at the client relationship, right? Um, I don't think it would matter if Brian screwed somebody's hair up, the person would be so excited to come back. Like they, he's, he's one of right. those kind of people, right? So, um, I don't think, I think we can use social media in my mind to, uh, actually build the client relationship stronger instead of thinking of it as a negative thing. What do you think? Oh, I, I think, I think social media is definitely a, a great tool uh, for learning to use for learning and education and everything else. But I also yeah. think that what happens is a lot of people look at social media and they go, Oh my God, that works perfect. Oh my God, that works perfect. Oh my God, that yeah. works perfect. Well, if they seen, you know, I, I don't post all my haircuts. I post right. what I want to post. I post what I choose to post. Um, and just one thing that I found out, you know, kind of recently, which is really weird. You know, I, I, you know, I work with a couple of um, people on my, uh, the Blonding and Beyond artistic team that I'm on, that it's our education team. And they're both known for color. And, you know, one's Jessica Powers, the other one's Fab Hair by Josh. They're both known for their colors. They're both known for their vivids. Josh has won awards for it. You know, he won a, a BTC award for it. But when you talk to them, 90% of their, I don't want to say 90% because I don't, I'm not sure, but a big percentage of their work is retouch, blonding, and balayage. They don't post it. Right. Because that's just not what they do. They post their vivid work, you know, just post some of her, um, um, balayage and stuff, but you know, Josh pretty much posts just all his vivid work because that's what gets the attention. 
Right. You know, and I, and I think that there's a misconception that, you know, and some people even say, we'll say it's ego or whatever, but I just think that it's us just putting our work out there because I'm not afraid to put my work out there. I don't care how bad it is or what it is or what style yeah. it is. You know, people say, say, oh, are you a barber? Are you a hair cutter? Are you a this? Are you a that? And I'm like, I don't care. I'll do it everything. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's great. And like, that's one thing I would say about your, um, like when you look at your Instagram and stuff is it's very real. Um, you get the vibe that you're in the salon, like all that stuff. Like you have some really, uh, photos that you can tell you've taken a lot of time in getting that perfect. And then you have some of your work that just looks like you shot it real quick in the salon and, and put it out there or you'll have a little video or whatever. Like I think that people get too worked up. People want to see real nowadays. Like I feel like yeah. um, sometimes it gets a little too produced, um, but I totally get that as well. I think um, being that's the great thing about Instagram stories and all that stuff is you can really be more real uh, and then have kind of your portfolio right. sitting on Instagram. Um, but yeah, I think I don't think it's necessarily like messing up the industry I, or creating a disconnection. I think what happens is when people have a, a client behind the chair and they decide I'm going to go onto social media and ignore my client, that's when there becomes an issue. But I don't think it's yeah. so much like, you know, taking photos and posting them on, on social media of your clients. That's not messing things up. So we just have to be careful and understand that that relationship between that person, if your income is solely based on you behind the chair working, then the number one thing should be that client from the minute they get there to the minute they leave. And when they see you, maybe not with them, you should be doing something else that is busy, right? So either with another client um, and they see that you're right. just working hard or catering to them and sitting with them for a half an hour, having a conversation or read them. And maybe they want to be on their laptop or their phone and they don't want to be, you know, messed with, but you have to, it's, it's a person by person. It's an individual thing. And we have to get back to focusing on that relationship. Let's see. Agreed. This is a good one for you. Uh, let's see. This is Joel again, but he says he, he asked this this morning. He said 35 days till he finishes cosmetology school. Um, what are some key things we can do to find new clients when starting at a, a new salon or uh, hit a plateau? So, so if you're starting a new salon or you hit a plateau, what do you do? Uh, he's got friends and family, walk-ins, all that stuff. So uh, what do you do? What have you been doing uh, to build your clientele? I know that you pushed some clients back and now you're going to be slammed for the rest of the day uh, <laughs> to be on here. Appreciate that. Uh, what have you done to grow your, your clientele? What do you think has been like a couple of the, the top things that have helped you? Grow? Um, still, I'm, I'm going to, you know, th that's the other thing with social media and whatnot. Um, you, we've tend to got a little bit lazy. Um, I think that the, the biggest thing you still have to put yourself out there. Number one, you have to put your face out there. You yeah. have to talk to the people you have to, you know, you have to have business cards. You know, I can't stress business cards enough, especially if you're a younger barber or you're a younger cosmetology student, how's somebody going to know where you are or who you are if all you're doing is telling them and then walking away, you know, leave them with an impression and leave them with a nice business card so they can look at it. If, you know, if it's connected to your social media or whatever, and your information's on there, they can look at your work and whatnot. But I, I, you, you have to just go out there and meet the people, you know, yeah. another, another, cool another thing big thing. It. If you, Sorry, real quick on your business card. Um, mm -hmm. Because it, if anybody's taking my classes, I'm not like, I like business cards, but I also know when I get a business card, I lose a business card. So I think it's also a cool thing mm -hmm. if you um, just use social media when you meet somebody and as your professional page, if you just ask them, who, who they are on Instagram and then you go give them a follow and whether they follow you back or not at that moment, um, you know, you just get to know that person for a second, you start following them on social media and now you can like their stuff and you can keep that relationship going. The problem with the business card is that transaction from back in the day, I gave you a business card and then you either forget who I am or 
you know, we never interact again unless you decide to make the phone call. Nowadays, right. you know, if I follow you from my professional page and now I'm liking things that come through my feed and we're building that relationship, the day that that person, guy or girl, decides I need a haircut and I can't get in with my stylist or uh, my stylist isn't doing hair anymore or whatever happens, um, the day that that happens, they now can go right to you because they know who you are. You've built that relationship. So it's utilizing social media for what it is, what it does best is creating those connections for, with people you don't really know or wouldn't have known. All right. What's number right. two? I, I, I kind of use a combination of that though. Like okay. I'll, I'll, uh, I think that when you're first starting out, if you don't have like an Instagram that's loaded with pictures and whatnot, but if you like, I kind of use what you just said, also giving them a business card because you're trying to sell yourself. Right. You know, you're trying to sell yeah. your work. You're trying to sell that. Hey, you know, and my, my thing is, you know, a lot of people go, Oh, well, they want to find the person that, and going back to something we talked about earlier, they want to, they, they walk up to the person that looks like he needs a haircut. Right. Well, sometimes that person looks like he needs a haircut for a reason yeah. because he doesn't really care about getting his haircut. I always go up to the clean cut guys, the guy that looks like he really takes care of himself, the guy that, or a girl and talk to them because even though they might already be going to somebody, those are the type of people that you want buying your chair. For sure. That's a good call. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. So let me throw the question back up. Um, so yeah, I think, I think those are honestly, I, I the biggest things, just getting yourself out there. Um, don't be afraid. We're in a business of talking to people. So this is the thing. Right. Like, I feel like you should have like this interview before you go to hair school that like, if you can't talk to somebody, like if you can't go up and have a conversation, then they should just cut you off because it, it is an industry <laughs> where you have to be, you have to be personable. So if you're not that right. great at it, um, just come up with a few things that you're definitely confident about talking about. Like for me, I'm not that confident in a room of people that I don't know. And I don't know what we're talking about. Right. That, that kind of makes me uncomfortable. But the one thing I am confident about talking about is hair because I've studied it. I know it. So think about making that the conversation. And it's an easy way to kind of turn this situation around is if you mm -hmm. know what you're talking about. Um, the people that struggle are when you try to fake everything, uh, that whole fake it till you make it. I don't think you should fake it till you make it. I think you should focus on the things that you know and use right. that and then just keep learning and growing from there. But yeah, you definitely have to put yourself out there. You have to get to know people. Um, if you don't want to do it, you know, the traditional way, it's not like we're going into businesses and soliciting anymore, but join it. Uh, try a new gym or try, you know, go to a different restaurant or like those kind of things, like try different things. And then you meet different people. Uh, right. All right. Last, last one here. What shears do you use? Oh, this is the biggest. Here we go. And oh, it doesn't matter. You're it doesn't, me. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, I was thinking about getting Mizutani puffins, hoping, um, they are better than my last or whatever. Um, so shark fin I've never used, so I don't have a, an opinion. Yeah. They actually gave me a pair of shark fin. This is terrible, but I, I don't even know. I think I gave them to Brian, but they gave them to me. They were swivel and I don't use swivel scissors. So I never right. tried them, but, um, so let's just talk about scissors. You know, I sell, I, I sell Mizutani, but I don't need to just talk about Mizutani. You don't need to talk about right. Mizutani. Let's be open here. Um, what do you like to use? I've used multiple brands. What is your thing right now? Um, oh, I use Hanzo's right now. And okay, but my my thing with scissors is, man. Now don't get me wrong. You need to have a good scissor, regardless. Yeah. Right. And you can, and it doesn't even really need to be a good scissor as long as it's sharp and it cuts hair. <laughs> right. You know, I honestly, you can give me a pair of kitchen scissors and I can make your hair look just as good as I can 
you know, with, with, with the shears that I use now, it might not be as efficient, right? but you know, as long as you know what you're doing, um, I believe that you can use just about anything. Yeah, for sure. And, and to elaborate on that, you know, a kitchen scissor is just going to be a different type of cutting. So, you know, it's going to push the hair a lot more, it's not going to grab right. the hair and cut a line. So you're going to, right. as you're cutting, you're just going to have to do multiple passes, like more passes as you go through it. Uh, that was a video I wanted to make a long time ago and never made it. But, um, you know, just showing the difference in scissor over comb with kitchen scissors or like, you know, fabric mm -hmm. scissors and a regular one probably should still make it just to show it. But the point of it is like, you don't need to spend $900 on a scissor, but if you spend $250 on a scissor, most likely, um, the blade will be just as sharp. It will feel just as sharp pretty much day one. Um, it's just the longevity, mm -hmm. you know, what you're trying to get out of it. So I think the sweet spot for me, and that's why, you know, the collections that I work on with Mizutani and the one that I'm coming out with now is I want the scissor to live in, in that $500, between four and $500 range, because I feel like that's the sweet spot. Like this scissor that I, that I have here, um, that this is, I don't even, I don't know how much this one is, but it's the, uh, the Dama metal or Dama, whatever, um, that Mizutani sent this for Christmas to me, but this is probably like 1500 bucks. It cuts awesome. I don't know how long it will cut awesome, but after that $500 mark, I feel like you pay for the, it's like buying a car, right? You can get a really nice car for $30,000. And anything above $30,000 doesn't make that car, it's just features, right? And like faster or uh, has right. the bigger sunroof or the navigation. Like it's all features. It doesn't get you from point A to point B, you know? Right. And, so, you know, I think that the other thing is like, a, I mean, she wants to use a puffin, but I believe a puffin is for dry cutting and slide for cutting. dry cutting, yeah. Yeah, and which is fine if that's what you do a lot of dry cutting, you know, but is I think that that's the, the other thing when people buy scissors also that they have to determine what, what are you using it for? What do you need it for? What is your, what is your bulk of work? How are you going to use, utilize that shear? Because why, you know, you also don't want to just buy a wet cutting shear if you're just going to do a lot of dry cutting because you're just right. going to dull that blade, right. <laughs> you know? So it's, it, there's a lot of, you know, you got to have a little bit of knowledge and that's something that I've learned through you and through a lot of other people, um, you know, on, on what shears to use for what tasks and purposes. Yeah. And so tell me just so we can give the people something, what are your two like go-to scissors that you're using? Uh, uh, you right now exactly I have, I, uh, my, I can't remember what my long one is but they're six and a half inches. Okay. I can't remember the name of it. And then I have a, um, my texturizing shear that I just, it's a VT2. Okay. And it's you use that quite a bit. Probably. Yeah. I use it quite a bit cause it, it it's a dry cutter, but yeah. it's also, you know, dry cutting you can use on wet hair also. It's but, a dry um, cutting texturizing it, scissor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what, why do you like the six so, and a half inch scissor? Like um, for what I do in the shop, you know, a lot of men's cuts, it's yeah. the precision doesn't necessarily need to be there. Sometimes it's more efficient to be able to take more hair out like at one time yeah. than, you know, when I'm just point cutting on a, on a detailed haircut or something. Um, Oh, I just got used to really cutting with a bigger sh scissor and I kind of like it. Yeah. Uh, I was using a five and five inch scissor and, okay. you know, just the an inch and a half. It got, took me a little bit to get used to, but it, I've, I've really grown to enjoy it. Yeah. I, um, I pretty much always use a five inch scissor, but that's, so the big difference is, and what you were kind of saying is, you know, precision work, you're going to use a shorter scissor because the shorter the blade, and I've talked about this a lot, but the shorter the blade, um, the more, uh, 
the easier it is to create a line. So it's stronger, right? So if you think about like when you pull out a tape measure and you go longer and longer, all of a sudden it gets weak and it falls. Like I think about mm-hmm. the scissor the same way. The longer that blade is towards the end of it, it's just a little bit weaker as it closes. Um, that point is further away. So when you go to cut hair, you're going to push it a little bit more towards the tip, depending on how thick the section is, all that stuff, the density of the hair, the texture of the hair, whatever. But for the most part, it gets weaker as it closes. So precision cutters usually use a shorter scissor. Barbers tend to use a longer scissor because you're doing scissor over comb. You're you're holding up the hair in a fine uh, way, using the comb, not a lot of tension. You're just kind of dusting through to scissor over comb work. And then when you cut on top of the head, it doesn't really matter. Like you can just chop through it or whatever. So um, right. that's why a lot of barbers tend to use. So those you guys in school or whatever, I wish people would have told me this stuff in school. Like uh, we didn't have YouTube to where people were breaking right. down scissors. The guy would just show up with a scissor purse and you would buy them for like 50 bucks. Yeah. He's like, and, oh, those uh, are cool. <laughs> yeah. Maybe all different colors. Two weeks later, you're like, man, these things suck. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So (laughs) that's the beauty of social media nowadays. At least you can, uh, you know, get, learn that stuff. So, all right, cool. Let me see. Is there anything else you, uh, you have going on? You want to talk about, um, um, I just would like to talk about my, uh, artistic team real quick, if you don't mind. Yeah, for sure. Just, uh, you know, we've been, Together now, this will be our third show coming up in March. We're going to be in uh, uh, Fremont, California. Or for, or sorry, not Fremont. Fountain Valley, California at Mikey Tease's Hair Salon. Um, we are the, uh, our, I guess, uh, motto is all hands on deck. Uh, it's an experience, like, uh, kind of like what we were talking about. So you, you're not finding this at hair shows and whatnot. Um, we we don't just work on a stage or like away from you. We want you in our bubble. We, we give you the opportunity to be up front and close inside. We have mannequin heads set up at the stations, um, at every station. Um, and, uh, so you can kind of get your hands on while you're learning the technique that we are teaching. Um, and like I said, uh, this one, there's seven of us. There's Jessica powers, Laura, Christopher, uh, Amy Lynn, hair artist, fab hair by Josh, me, Pigment. And if you don't know who Pigment is, uh, she's pretty awesome. And Mikey Tease will be at this one. Okay. Um, and it's, 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 uh, it's pretty cool. It's like I said, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, an, it's more of a movement so that we can give an experience to somebody that, that you're not just getting at these hair shows anymore because, you know, when you're when somebody's up on a stage, it's hard to learn because they're they've already done like half the cut or whatever, right? And you can't see a lot of it. I mean, even with the cameras that they got now and the big screen TVs, you just don't feel like you're part of it. We make you actually feel like you're part of the show, and part of what's going on. So, I just want to talk about that real quick. How many uh, attendees are going to be there? I was trying to find the flyer so I could put it up there, but um, <clears throat> like, what do you? I'm not for? sure how. Uh, 30 to anywhere between 30 to 50. I think at okay. the last one we had like 30, 35 or something. The one before that we had probably about the same. Okay. This yeah, will be sure. our third one and they keep getting better. And it's, you know, it's, it's good education. Um, and the cool thing is you don't just have to like watch one person. We're all in the same room. We're all like, like this, the last place we set up, we were all kind of looking at each other and, the vibe was really strong because you, you felt the connection. You were really feeling the connections with the people and the uh, people that were wanting to learn. So it was pretty cool. Very cool. I think I, uh, I think I found it here. Open it works. Holy God. Look at this. Boom. There we go. So, (laughs) so there's the flyer. So those are all the artists. Um, those of you guys watching the podcast, if you're listening to the podcast, go check out, uh, at jcash underscore the hair tech on Instagram. And, yeah, and right now we have a the flyer $150 early bird special for like a month and then the price will go up. So you also have a free salon education podcast network hat on in the picture. So yes. Appreciate that. Awesome. <laughs> appreciate the representing. <laughs> All right. Very cool. So, uh, 
thank you so much for for being on the show and and dealing with the uh the technical difficulties and everything right um really thank you man I, you know i always appreciate i always appreciate talking to you and i'll do anything to, to help you and whatever you need you know me i'm always down for it and i need to get my butt back out to new hope and uh yeah, we do gotta do this in video person. For you guys. And do another <laughs> right. video for sure. Uh, if you check out our YouTube and you type in uh, uh, J Cash on our YouTube channel, you'll see the video we created together. Um, and that was pre you being an educator all over the world, right? Planet, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so it's very cool. And uh, yeah, well, a lot of that comes from guys like you, Matt. Because I'm not gonna lie, you're a big inspiration behind what I do and my work. And, uh, you know, I've, I've said it a thousand times and you hate it when I do it, but thank you very much because oh, you were a huge inspiration to me, dude. It's good. This industry is good. It always builds, builds these kind of friendships and I appreciate, you know, being able to reach out to you and just have you on the podcast this quick. Uh, and we'll definitely, whenever you want to come here, let me know. And, you know, obviously right. you're, you're always welcome and I can't wait to film with you again. Um, all right, man. So I'll talk to you soon. I'm All right. On, Thanks, I'm guys. Up on Have a you. good one. <laughs> All right, man. Hang up. <laughs> Later, yeah. buddy. Bye. All right. So let me see. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the podcast with Johnny. Um, had a lot of fun hanging out with you. I could see your chats. Um, I did see all of your stuff. It looks like you guys enjoyed the show. Um, any chance to come into Texas? Maybe Johnny will answer that later, um, but check out his social media and you'll see if he's coming. Am I coming to Texas? Not at this moment. Um, taking the break this spring from hair shows. Uh, Want to stay here, create things, do this podcast, put out videos, get back to that routine. Uh, and we're also doing a lot of work uh, with hair companies. So there'll be a lot of that you'll see uh, as well. Um, go to stylislocator.com if you guys want to see the website that we're creating. Um, it's it's awesome, and uh, it's it's going to be launching in about hopefully hopefully within the next week. Um, we've been working really hard at it, but you can sign up for the email list so that when it does launch, you can get it. But it's going to be a website where uh, customers can create profiles, learn hair tricks on their own, for their own hair but also find you guys as stylists. You guys can learn on there, create a profile, communicate with customers. It's going to be a really awesome uh, website. So I'm excited to launch that in the next week. Uh, thank you again to everybody that has stayed with us live. Um, and that's it. We'll see you guys on the next show. Also, again, go check out my friends at MinervaBeauty.com. This is our salon. Uh, if you guys are listening to this podcast, trust me. There's some beautiful furniture in our salon. The mirrors, the chairs, the color carts, uh, the processors, the co like everything is from MinervaBeauty.com. And this is their brand new uh, portable trays that we just put in the salon this week. So uh, thank you guys so much. Check out MinervaBeauty.com backslash FSE uh, for a discount. And I'll see you guys on the next. Let me see. See you guys on the next one next week let me know actually let me know in the comments who do you want to see on this show who do you want to see me talk to um and i'll invite them in and hopefully we can get them on the show so let me know in the comments as well see you guys